The disc is a ligamentous structure, and the disc is the actual cushion in between the vertebral bodies. But it's more than a cushion, it's more than a shock absorber, it actually is a ligament that allows the body to move. It has to support the body in all planes of motion, whether it's flexion, extension, side bending, rotation, axial loading. So it has to carry a lot of weight and a lot of load in different areas. The disc itself is made up of a collagen fiber, just like a knee ligament or a shoulder ligament, and it can get torn just like a knee ligament or shoulder ligament. The actual fibers are put in a circumferential fashion, so there's actually a circular fashion around the disc to make tighter and tighter wiving, much like a radial tire. And that actually supports not only the load of the body, but then allows for the various ranges of motion and planes of motion. When we talk about a neuromotion segment, a neuromotion segment is the disc, the two facet joints at that level, and then the bone above and below. So a neuromotion segment is a three-joint complex, the disc in the front, the two facet joints in the back. So this is like a three-legged stool. And if you have a three-legged stool and you shorten one of the legs or disrupt one of the legs, you've got a problem. Same is true in the spine. If you disrupt the disc, you've ruined one of the legs of that three-legged stool. If you disrupt one or both of the facet joints, then you've also disrupted that three-legged stool. So all of these structures are important in the function of the spine. The facet joints allow for the actual flexion, extension, and rotation, and as does the disc itself in the front. With the neuromotion segment, we also know that there are nerves that come out at each level. The area in the back of the disc, behind the vertebral body, below the pedicle above, above the pedicle below, is a little foramina there. And through that window, nerves come out from the spine. And each level of the spine gives off a nerve that goes to somewhere in the body. In the neck, the nerves go to our arms. In the thoracic area, the nerves go out to the chest wall and to the organs. And in the low back, those nerves go out to the organs and then down into the extremities, the lower extremities. To summarize these points, we'll look at a larger model of the lumbar spine. We can see that there are five lumbar vertebrae, just as we talked about earlier. The discs are in between at each neuromotion segment, and a nerve comes off each level. If the disc tears or breaks, a piece can protrude, and that would be a disc herniation. And this would be an example of one that's coming lateral to the spine. The large SI joints, or sacroiliac joints, are down at the base of the sacrum here, and these form the large joint that matches out to the pelvis to the side. The facet joints are in the back, and again, they provide motion with flexion, extension, and rotation in conjunction with the discs. We know that in the cervical spine, we have the same thing. Now here's our cervical model. There's seven cervical vertebrae. This is the base of the skull. We can see nerves exit at each level. The discs are in between the bones. The bones are much smaller in the neck, though, because there's much less load to support. In the neck, all we have to support is the head, whereas in the low back, we have to support the entire body mass and trunk. So we can see much smaller structures. And the nerves that come out here go to the upper extremities and arms. The facet joints in the back are a little shorter and flatter, but again, allow for that rotation and bending.